Hey everybody, welcome to Read Watch Play. Uh, this is a special one shot for our review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'm your host, Tony Cox. With me as always, Clifford Farmeter. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to do a qu very quick non spoiler reaction. Uh, woo boo right now. And then we'll get into the deep spoilers in a minute. And there is a lot to cover. Very divisive film. Star Wars fans, film critics, audiences, all over the place on this film. So well, apparently, so, film critics not as much. Well, that's true. But there, between the two, the audiences and the critics, it's uh, there's 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 quite a bit of uh, of uh, divisiveness here. So first well, off, I already got my new shirt. I know you got, I'm, and it, sa it says the Last Jedi. Right, right the Last Jedi. I'm right. a little jealous, actually. Right. So. Oh my! God, I'm gonna have to stand up. Look at that. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. I love it. I'm so excited. Let's let's talk about uh, Woo Boo. So you go first. My general assessment. So did we or did we not previously discuss in the show that this movie would only fail me if it were predictable? I believe so. Yes. Right. So I think y'all know there was anything but predictable. I was in love. I was so excited. I was just like everything was just. Fresh to me, and I was just like, I don't know where this is going. I was like, every time I expected one thing, something else happened. And I mean, I realize for for everybody that's not like a wonderful thing, but like for me, mm -hmm. for me thinking this franchise must change to bloom, and I think this is probably going to be the toughest pill for a lot of people to swallow mm -hmm. because it's time. It is time for a new generation. Mm -hmm. For, for Star Wars, and so, like, and this movie ushers that in in a very strange way, and like, I'll talk about that more. Um, but yeah, it was, it was everything I wanted, like, 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 artistically, mm -hmm. you know, like, from, from, like, from, from, from the, from the narrative and visuals, amazing, you know? I guess there's smaller things for me to have qualms about, but, like... It's, uh, again, when we review these films, I'm not reviewing them for, a, for Academy Award winning quality. Right. Although, if we are going to talk about Academy Award winning quality, Mark Hamill delivered the <laughs> finest, yeah, I was pretty finest performance yeah. of his life. Yeah. So for all of y'all who are watching his interviews where he's like, I can't believe that this is Luke Skywalker's story. Oh my God. Yeah, he delivers the finest performance yeah. of his life. He puts his jokers to shame. I mean, he is amazing in this movie. Uh, so... Uh, That's a woo. That's a woo. <laughs> uh, huge woo for me too. Um, I, I watched it twice. Uh, my initial viewing, I did have a couple issues with it, and I and I, but I knew, I said I need to see this again because there's so much to process, and I highly recommend that anybody who has seen it once go back for a second viewing because um, when you expect some of the things that are a little out of the Star Wars zone, um, it it allows you to focus more on the story and more on the message, and I and I and I feel like it 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 flows and fits and. Uh, means a lot more the second the second viewing. So one of the things that I loved about this movie that I also loved about Rogue One is the war in Star Wars yeah. is there. Is there this? We could we could change we could visually ch change the structure. <laughs> it is still a, a war film. Yeah, you know there's that narrative is very much there, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. So big move for me. I if you haven't seen it, please go out and see it. Uh, and don't continue on this review until you have. Uh, and if you've only seen it once and you're not quite sure, or you didn't like it, please go back and check it out a second time. Uh, I think if you're in the middle, go back a second time. I think for people, who, I yeah. think for people who are on the the I'm done end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still think I still think rewatching it a second time would help. Will help them, and you I know? think that they it, it may it may turn them because there's so much to process in this film that. It's going to be one of those movies that every time you watch it, you you get more out of it, you learn more, you see more. There, I saw it twice, and there was things I completely missed, and we'll talk about that in a little and, bit. Well, let me tell you, but without being spoilerific, right? One of the things I realized about missing the film, I'm in this beautiful theater, and uh, and you know, and, and we're you know we're eating food and stuff too, mm -hmm. we're watching movies, it's amazing, and uh, Alamo Draft House Yonkers, and uh, so we're having such an amazing time. But people cheered and clapped. Yeah. And simultaneously, so I think that's another way to miss out things in the movie. Uh, but what a great audience we had! Yeah, we had a really good audience. Uh, I went Thursday night uh, at uh, at 
nine thirty in Albany and um, and had a pretty good crowd and um, and they would clap and cheer at certain times and and there's one particular moment where there was dead silence. Same and, here. And, Same and, here. And, and you get like very tiny, you know, you know. And, well, there uh, was there was before that there was a huh. Right, yeah. and then that scene, it was just silence, yeah. and yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. And if that doesn't prove that film is an artistry of its own, yeah. then I'm I'm so sorry we disagree. This is, <laughs> regardless of what you may feel about the content of the film, this is this is by far the most beautiful Star Wars movie ever made. No, it isn't. It I is, just... it is visually stunning and just, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, you know, a visual feast beyond what we've been accustomed to in these films. So. Yeah, they they, they <clears throat> didn't, uh, like, I don't know. It was just like, yeah. I could not believe what a great job they were doing. With um, all right, so let's jump into spoilers. Um, Cut off now. Adam, go see the movie. Yes, go watch the movie. Go see it again. <laughs> Spoiler warning. You've been warned. Uh, all right, so let's start in with the plot of this. Um, very roughly... Um, this picks up shortly after the events of The Force Awakens. Yes. It's a little ambiguous as to the time frame for the fleet. We right. know that what happens with Rey is immediately picks up, and you could sort of calculate the days that, that, that this has been going on. I would, I'd like to assume that when we pick up with the fleet, it's days after Rey has left. It certainly is. And when we pick up with Rey... Uh, her initial scene with Luke is like immediate, and yeah. then when we come back to, I, I mean, I, in a very strange way, I want to presume that like we're kind of watching like a month go by. So in my calculations, the the fleet, all the fleet stuff happens roughly in like twenty four hours. Yeah. Uh, because they even say at one point like we have eighteen hours until X happens, yes. and you know until this stuff happens and. Um, and and so I'm, I'm I believe it's about 24 hours. Now Ray spends several nights on Octu with Luke before she returns to the fleet. Yeah. So what, it's clear that having, she's been there several, several while days. having contact through the Force with Kylo Ren. Force Skype. Yeah, Force Skype. Force I Skype. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Force Skype. Uh, so like, but no, seriously. Um, that kind of offsets how long are you and where because that's happening and we're presuming that's it's true. happening simultaneously. That's true. That's true. So uh, so very roughly... Uh, of course, so their hours and their days are in the galaxy true. a long time ago, yeah. far, far away. <laughs> uh, so the, 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 the First Order fleet catches, uh, goes to the base that we saw, the, the Resistance base, Destroys the resistance base. The fleet jump the the resistance with Carrie Fisher's away. daughter, Billy Lord. She's leading, such a great. She's leading. such a great part in this movie. Uh, she does. So. It's small. I'm so happy to see her. Um, I guess because I've been listening to the Princess Diaries, mm -hmm. and 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 your buddy Tony has been listening to them. I uh, know listening to her last book recently, and I yeah. told him every time I listen, I'm listening to pieces of it in the car mm -hmm. still to this day, because I can't handle it all at once, yeah. and like I'm always driven to tears, because when you're listening to it, it's like Carrie Fisher sitting in your living room or sitting in your car telling you stories, yeah. Yeah. and I'm just like, and I can't handle it. I, when she died, like I there's just, just this piece of me that was like, like oh, oh no, Cliff, you didn't yeah. know how much she meant to you, yeah. and, now, I, and now every time you see her, it's going to kill you a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I love seeing her daughter with that part. I mm -hmm. love that her part was like a little bit leadership, a little bit mutiny, a little bit everything. I was so happy. I really hope she has a nice role in, and, in, the, yeah, in the ninth I, movie. I hope so too. And the way, just the opening of that where they, you know, the, the crawl happens and you zoom down through all the transports leaving down onto the planet and then like the barrage, um, you know, they, then it comes back up to the space battle. A, one of the best, like war feeling space battles in, that is in Star Wars. The I bombers, thought... the whole Poe thing. Okay, now first off, let's address the humor in this right away. Okay, it jarring for a lot of people. So it was it. So I'll be honest with you. Uh, my my initial reaction, Poe, you know, d does the thing where he's whole, he he calls the he calls the um, the star destroyer, asks for General Hux, this so he can buy time for his. For his uh, bla his uh, booster thing to charge, and uh, you know he says he says you know I have an urgent message for General Hux. Hux responds silence, and then he's like I'm still holding for General Hux. 
that like my I was like, oh, that's 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 jarring, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, but not out of character for Poe, given his interaction with Kylo Ren at the beginning of The Force Awakens. Okay, yeah. it was Hux's reaction that I then and I literally had this thought in my head. Oh my God, this movie was written by the robot chicken guys <laughs> in that scene. And I was like, scene. and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, this scene was written by the robot chicken guys. And I'm just like, cause this, th- that, and the thing is, is like JJ Abrams once said, how do you make a Star Trek movie after Galaxy Quest? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and that's a tough thing is how do you make a new refreshing Star Wars movie after Robot Chicken and Galaxy Quest and all of these things, you know? And um, and the choice to embrace that, uh, I I uh, the initial viewing, I was like, oh okay, this is this is funny, this mm-hmm. is funny, and but right, you know what went through my head? I was like, oh, this is like a little bit of Marvel movie humor. I'm not sure how I feel yeah, about this. Adam Adam said, oh, it's Disney. Yeah. Disney forced this in, right? But you know, <laughs> but re- really, I it's very s- interesting. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, Disney, 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 Disney's yeah. ruining yeah. things. I posted an article about Jim Starlin being dropped off of Thanos and yeah. not walk, wanting yeah. to work with Marvel. All my friends, oh, you see Disney. No. He has a specific Tom Berberhart. He mm-hmm. worked with at Marvel. He has a specific problem with him, which now when that Thanos series comes out, you know I'm going to be reviewing and double-checking mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very specific thing. Disney wants to make money because they're a corporation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the only time that they intervene deeply is if they're hearing horrible reports from a set. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, like like if the crew is like, oh my God, so-and-so's never here direct. We only see him six hours a day, but we're working 18. And let's be you know? clear, Disney is That's, a huge corporation, yeah. and they own Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm, and yeah. then those are their own corporations. They own ABC. And they, yeah. they are run by those entities. So like yeah. Kathleen Kennedy is the head of Lucasfilm, Kevin yeah. Feige is the head of Marvel Studios. It's it very rarely do I feel like Bob Iger from Disney is like running to a set and being like, "Don't you do this?" Blah blah blah, or no. make sure you write this in. Blah blah blah. Yeah, no, absolutely like, not. I think like Kathleen Kennedy, maybe her, maybe she's going, guys. We agreed that we're that we are well, sticking the Han to Han Solo movie, right? Like for example, like we agreed we're sticking to X, Y, and Z. Yeah. We must. You're right. The Han Solo movie is a uh, is an example. You know, it's funny. This film actually made me like less excited even though i love this film yeah. it made me less excited to see the han solo film because it was like oh i'm supposed to like you know let the past die i'm like why do i want to see young han yeah. solo running around <laughs> like, um so <clears throat> so poe zooms in there's this hysterical scene with him in general acts <clears throat> poe zooms in be- beautiful war I, you know what i loved about the visuals and he's a different director mm-hmm. and yet jj abrams like actually gave you these scenes that like you, it was like Star Wars version of World War II. Yeah. You know, when the X-Wing fight... This is in <clears throat> Force Awakens, by the way. When the X-Wing fighters are, like, flying overhead and you see the flaming crater from the planet. And I was just like, damn. And I, I was just like... And this movie, I had that, that level of the excitement. Bomber, the bomber runs coming in, like, the whole thing. Like, just... Yeah. It, it felt so gritty and, like, like, like saving Private ryan Yeah. You know? And, and, and you know what? Even though... Even <clears throat> though I expected that last bomber to succeed... It was still just tense enough. I'll honestly, I mean, Ryan Johnson is um, the one thing I give him huge props for, and is he he knows how to manipulate you in a in, in his in his work because when she, when she's Paige Rose's sister is yeah. kicking the ladder to try to get that 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 button down. Yeah. And it comes down. I'm like, oh, she's gonna grab it, and, and then it goes past, past her, start. and it's like, oh my god. And the th- what's so great is he's so able to to force you into not knowing what's going to happen next. And like you think you have an idea, you think you know how this is going to go. And Luke says it in the trailer. He says this is not going to go the way that you think. He says it beautifully. It in the is. Movie. And let me tell you, the, it, nothing in this movie goes the way that you I think. In fact, the in last my opinion. the last thing that happens that goes the way I think is Rose pulling that trigger and dropping those bombs. Page. Page. Rose sorry. Assist- Rose and assist- uh, right and, and what what's the results? She's the last bomber yeah. and now she's dead too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And 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 who and who has to pay for that? 
And I'll, and the thing is, is like we're so used to, oh, everybody runs in, they blow up the big bad, and then they're like, yay! Yeah, and then they all get sacrifices. Ducked, and Leia slaps Poe across the face and yeah, says, because you know, they lost so many people. And and Poe even says there were there, there were a lot of heroes out there, and she goes, yeah, and no, a lot of dead heroes and no leaders. And it's like, whoa. Like, immediately we're just like, okay, I, this is different than what we're used to. Yeah. I know that people may be upset by it, but again, this put the war back in Star mm -hmm. Wars, okay? Mm -hmm. Poe has to be accountable. Yep. She's the general. He ignored orders. And a level... And people died because yep. of his actions. Yep. So she demoted him, and that was totally right. Yep. And a, a level of a level of maturity in dealing with the war, because yep. in previous Star Wars movies, it's been like, yay! Because you know? Han is... the Han is the one who would fly off the handle in previous movies. Yeah. Han is the one who would take the risk. Yeah. And Han was the one who was accountable for yeah. his risk, right? And in real life, that is not true. Yeah. Especially, again, in a war. Yeah. So, do we want Star Wars to live up to that expectation? I think we do, because the freaking name of the movie is Star Wars. Yeah. You know, it's not called, it's not called, you know, the Jedi series, right. which I guess is kind of in people's minds that yeah. all Star Wars. Should feature a Jedi. Well, it's not called. <laughs> it's not called. You know. Uh, it's not called like intergalactic C-span, which is what the prequels ended up being to an extent. Oh, there was, there, was a, there was a bit of that. Well, the, like, the Senate. You know? Yeah, I which mean, is funny. You're very dismissive of the first one, but the first one is super and it's Senate heavy. Oh yeah. You know? Well, that's what I mean. It's like I'm watching intergalactic C-span for two and a half hours. And Pod Race two thousand. Exactly. It's like, that yeah. movie is and those it's like, two oh, things. Oh my gosh. So. Uh, there's a, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of redeeming things. You know what we should do? We should do a whole rewatch of, of all six movies and or do commentary. That would be fun. No, we should. It'll be fun. I uh, but I do feel like I don't know. I definitely feel like I'm tainted because I've absorbed so much now. Yeah. For these movies. But anyhow, back to the Last Jedi because there's just so much happening so fast. So they so the Resistance fleet jumps away and then moments later the the First Order fleet joins them. And then you you discover that there is uh, there is uh, some means to track um, through hyperspace. hyperspace tracking, which I don't know if you're aware of this. Appeared in Rogue One. There's a huge Easter egg in Rogue One where Jin Erso is reading the list of projects, trying to find the one with the Death Star plans, and one of the ones she reads is hyperspace tracking. Yep. So brilliant job of interconnecting them with these little like Easter eggs. So so well done. Um, and that sets uh, Finn and Rose on a mission. Uh, by the way, Ro we sort of skipped over Rose's introduction, but... Oh my god, um, that is a great introduction. Rose's introduction was It's not amazing. so hot for Finn, but it's great yeah, for Rose. Uh, just, just immediately you you get this character... She has the other half of her sister's She has the other half pendant. of her sister's pendant. Let me tell you, that worked my emotions the whole film. It, you, you're immediately on her side, and then when, when, when you see... The just, juxtaposition of her sister committed herself to the to the cause and died, yep. and Finn is jumping in uh, an escape pod, and we know and he's going. We know he's going to save his friend. Yeah, but in her mind, he, he's abandoning. He's a war hero that's abandoning his. And that's his another thing, right? She instantly sees him as a legend and a war yeah. hero, and it's o it's only been days or weeks. Yeah. Since since that happened, since Starkiller Base, right? Yeah. So that's another important thing about perception because this movie constantly is yeah. is challenging the characters and the audience yeah. on perception. And, and I'll be honest with you, this entire movie I felt like was a giant troll to in in such a great way to all of us fans who spend our time debating theories of this and that. Who are Ray's parents? Who is Snoke? What is what is Luke going to do with that lightsaber? You know, I'm going to be honest. Like with all you. of these, the most important questions we thought in the last two years mean nothing, and they're the storytellers are going to tell us what's important. Yeah, but I got to tell you though, I, ultimately I'm interested in who the hell is Snoke. I don't care what cartoon series or whatever. Yeah. I mean. Like, I get it, and I'm totally down for it for this movie, but, like, I do want to know who he is. Yeah. I want to know where he came from. It's kind of like, it's just like, imagine if, like, we were never, ever, ever told anything about the Emperor, ever. Yeah. You know? And it was yeah. just like, he's not important. This is about Luke and his dad. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Which, actually, I guess if you watched it back well, in 1983, that's how it was. <laughs> sort of. So, um, so, intercut between this is Ray. 
on Octu with yeah. Luke. So she goes, she hands him the lightsaber. He tosses it. He's staring it and then whoop over the shoulder. And that was another moment where I was like, wait, what? And then and I laughed out loud because was I was like, that's amazing. I was like, I, that's when I accepted the fact that this movie was going in directions that I had I was not prepared for, and that, and that they were telling me that all of the things that we all thought were important to the meaning of Star Wars in the story are not, and that, and that, and that he is going to tell us what's important to this story. He's going to tell us the story and the meaning of it, and um, and and Luke on, um. On this planet, on Octu, as the curmudgeonly old hermit, much like Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, um, you know, just... And you know what's funny? That people couldn't see that happening for Luke. It, well, it's... I don't know as it's they couldn't see it happening, it's that they didn't want to see it happen. I, no, right, well... It, I think the fact that they can't... I think the fact that they can't see it happening is why there's a freaking petition to, like... Dis disown this movie, which, yeah, which made silly, a by fortune, the by the way. So that's silly. Yeah, like, that. where was your petition for when you hated the the new trilogy? Yeah, like, for for the Phantom Menace. Where yeah, was exactly. Your trilogy yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, so like, midi chlorians. <laughs> yeah. Remember, which again hated it then, and after watching the Clone Wars, which is still in canon, love it. The last three episodes where uh, Yoda is listening to oh, Qui-Gon. Oh, Yoda's like, yes, like and he out in the thing. And, and we discover yeah. the metachlorians is how the Force communicates to living creatures. Yeah. That was amazing, because yeah. that took away this scientific -y thing that Lucas threw at us and brought yeah. us back to the spiritual yeah. nature of the Force. Yeah. I love it. As long as they keep it that way, I'm in. And since it is canon, because it's one of the things mm -hmm, they classify mm -hmm, as canon, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm down for that. By itself, as you pointed out, horrible. Yeah. Combined, yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, so Ray discovers that Luke is not the great legend that people think he is. And he brings it up. Oh, the, 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 this movie has a conversation with the fans. Yes. And that is what excites me about this. This movie is... First and foremost, it is a great adventure story with amazing characters that you love. It is a Star Wars movie that is part of a much bigger universe. Then, it's a movie about something that is telling you one of the important things in life. And then, it's a blatant conversation with the fans about fandom itself. I mean, this movie, the layers of this movie are just incredibly deep and... And and meaningful, like I just it, this movie has literally blown me away yeah. for what being a fan of it's, of a franchise is. It's and, and right, and, and that's the other thing that I guess you have to keep in mind for better or for worse. Yeah, this is a franchise. Yeah, and there's right, so. there's stuff, and we'll, and we'll we'll talk about it here in a minute. But there's stuff about this film. There's moments that that uh, I did not find as powerful to me as like you found. I know that for a fact. And there are moments that. Uh, that mean way more to me than other people. Like they just dismiss those things, and so um, we're gonna. I, I can't wait to so hear about Ray, that because I know about mine. That I'm so like, Ray. Oh. Ray discovers that Luke is not the legend that everybody thinks he is. He he wants nothing to do with the Jedi or the or or teaching. And and, and what do you think? Are gonna walk in there with a lightsaber and save everyone? And well, I fa take on the whole first <laughs> order by myself. Yes. And the great thing is, is like they literally tell you how this movie is gonna end, like through the whole movie. Yeah. Like they literally tell you what's gonna happen later. I, I love I like, love the weird foreshadowing. Oh, it just like it's so funny. Like they really like just blatantly <laughs> tell you exactly. Like what? What's gonna happen? You know. But at the exact same way, being like, "But why would you expect yeah, that? Yeah, That's yeah, not reasonable." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's so funny because it's like because it's like everybody had it in their mind. Oh, Luke is gonna come in and save the day. <laughs> and then you watch this movie, and he's and he's like, "What do you think I'm gonna do? Just come in and save the day?" It's like that's clearly not gonna happen because it's dumb. And then he, in a way, he does that. He comes in by himself and saves the day. Yeah, so. but only the day, not. Exactly, not, and that's another not the, great, not the war. Exactly, and yeah. so um, one of my favorite moments is when is when Ray says, you know, says, you know, oh, you gotta, you know, the the, the force is this and this and this, and he goes every word in that sentence, is everything wrong? is sentenced. I love what he does. I love and what he does. And then the callback call back at the end is just incredible. So, um, so Ray discovers that 
that the force is not exactly what she thinks it is. You know, it's the in between. Exactly, it's the cartilage of the universe. Yeah. And it takes. I stole that from Kevin Smith. I'm not gonna lie, but I like um, that. And so at this point, Luke is very dismissive of her, doesn't want anything to do with her, <laughs> refuses to let her into his house. <laughs> Reach out. <clears throat> well, and yeah, then and then tickles, eventually tickles, yeah, her, tickles her, her and then just, oh, yes, the force, yes, oh, yes, but you're powerful. The force slaps her. It was so great. Oh, it was, was Neville. I was like, he's totally become Yoda. I, I know, he this. really has. He really has. <laughs> and uh, uh, so so the, the whole Luke Skywalker journey and arc and Mark Hamill is delivers an amazing performance I and I'll be honest with you I in the force awakens I was a little underwhelmed by um, by uh, Mark Hamill's brief appearance and performance and um, Carrie Fisher's performance as Leia. I was I was I was very underwhelmed I I it, it was almost as though I wasn't underwhelmed they were a little by fatigued yeah. by uh, by um, I just didn't feel like they were like they were there yet. In this movie, oh. they were they were they, they were, were Leia and, and Luke, and <laughs> it was the performances were fantastic. Especially and, Leia. Leia was Leia, 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 and, all movie long, and, and just incredible. And we, you know, if if you if you've read the reports, Ryan Johnson worked closely with Carrie Fisher. She suggested some rewrites in some of the Leia scenes. She helped to craft, you know, the dialogue and stuff for Leia yeah. and. And maybe that's why I got I get so emotional every time I saw her on screen because I was like, oh my god, this is the Leia, everything, including yeah. the the thing that you took issue with, everything yeah. was like, this is the Leia I have always wanted, and this is her goodbye, and I and I and because that was in and my mind, I was just so emotional. What's amazing is that nothing was changed in this film after she passed. Yeah. This is the version of the film that was always intended to be. And nine was supposed to be because it's very clear a very that Leia centric film. Force Awakens is Han is Han's story is Han's like wrap up. The Last Jedi is Luke's, and then nine was supposed to be Leia's, and now we're in this whole new world of. What I've, do we do? I, I I'm I'm actually since JJ is going to come back to do nine. Yep. Um, and he is the one who kicked this whole thing off. And that's another thing too. If you don't really love things in this film, how do you not know that the trilogy once it can complete won't Make you whole in a whole different and way. J.J. Abrams said he turned down directing, directing the second one, and then he read Ryan Johnson's script, yeah. this, and said, "I'm really upset that I'm not directing this." Yeah, because he loved the script. Yeah, because he because and who wouldn't this like you know I, I I you know what I would love if they co-wrote it the third one because I feel he I feel J.J. brings the love of fandom strong. Yeah. But I felt that Ryan delivered the new directions have to be taken. Yeah. However, Ryan Johnson's getting his own Star, Star Wars trilogy. I know. And I think we got a taste of it in this movie. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I, by meaning, I mean like the setup occurred in this film, and I'm, I'm here for it. Um, I think, I honestly think he's going to the Old Republic. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Oh, oh God. I think, I think that he is going to tell... Either the formation of the Jedi or or the the old Republic. Like I think that I think that he's going some other way, some other place, some other way. You know what? If he does, I respect him for constantly going after the thing mm -hmm. that we're not expecting. So I'm not gonna complain. But in my heart of hearts, I just that planet with the little boy, the little kids, just oh, no, I want that. That's nine. Oh, that's I think nine? that's going to be nine, and I think that that's. And we'll, his new... we'll talk. We'll talk about that when we get to the end. But I think. Um... I think that's his new trilogy. No, no, no. I, I I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I. I, I we'll, also, we'll, we'll talk about our. I also. Our... I also would not disagree with that being nine yeah. because they need to go somewhere, and we do not have Carrie Fisher. Yeah. So. Uh, so so Ray starts training with Luke a little bit, but he only trains her to show her why he's going to train her three lessons, and then he, and then he's going to he's going that that'll be why the Jedi need to end. Mm -hmm. Why the religion needs to die, and um, uh, then we go back. I like how she goes right to the dark, and he freaks out. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's like, "It called you, so you just went right for yeah, the dark." Yeah, like, you didn't even stop. You didn't even, like, what's wrong with yeah, you? You just went for. It. In the meantime, you know, which he is one to talk. Okay, because. Uh, Return of the Jedi Luke is all using dark force so powers. Can I just say, somebody asked, somebody somebody t tweeted a question to Mark Hamill. They were doing this whole like video of like uh, Last Jedi uh, stars uh, answer Twitter questions, and somebody said, "Do Jedi's ever use? Uh, uh, do Jedi's ever force choke?" 
And he was like, ah, no, probably not. And I'm like, you literally did it in Return of the Jedi. You yeah. choked a Gamorrean guard at Jabba's palace. Yeah, again. Dressed in... Again, we're the fans, mm -hmm. and he's the guy who did the movies and then goes home and has a life. Yeah. So, yeah. like... Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is, is somebody somebody also... Somebody tweeted, they, they, they did an experiment where this person never seen a Star Wars movie at all watched Return of the Jedi. Just okay. started with Return of the Jedi. And halfway through the film, they realized Luke Skywalker was not the bad guy. Because in the beginning of that movie, you like it's pretty clear that this guy is like it, you would you could easily assume that he's the bad guy. Yeah, but shows up in a hooded cape, dressed in black, chokes some people, like mind controls. Mind controls. It's like <laughs> whoa, this guy's like you yeah. know. However, I mean, I know, but can you not tell by watching it blindly that like Leia and Han are the good guys, and he's hanging out with them? Well, you'd think. Yeah. I, well, I'm saying, even if I were to watch it detached, yeah. I still think, okay, well, they rescued this guy, and these people seem cool, and, like, yeah. I think they're the good guys. Or, if I'm watching it detached, I'd be like, oh, my God, this is, like, they're, like, space pirates, and they're, like, killing, they're choking out that yeah. fat dude and stuff, and they're just, they're just, like, yeah! And they're like, <laughs> oh, what's this Empire thing? <laughs> uh, so, um, so, uh, back to the fleet. So, Rose, so... Um, Rose and Finn have to go on this mission where they need to find that a slicer. That is not an official mission, okay? That freaking uh, captain, because he's been demoted, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Poe. Captain Poe, Damron. Against, against uh, uh, Vice Admiral Haldo, who is... Oh! So Laura let's, Dern! Hang on, hang on, let's back up. Let's talk about the Leia scene. So during... During the the uh, t the initial battle, which is being led by uh, which is being led by Kylo Ren, by Kylo Ren, yeah, uh, and there's that shot in the trailer where you think he's going to shoot his mother, and, and he doesn't, and and, and, and it's we're there. all thinking we're all thinking there's no way those two scenes are together, and they're together, and they're not only are they together, it's, they literally show you like what happens, yeah. and except that he doesn't do it, you know, he's conflicted by the yeah. light, and the other Tie Fighters do it, the other Tie Fighters, and that's another moment where it's like. Oh wow! It's not gonna. Yeah. It's Ryan Johnson again. Does the bait and switch? When and he, I saw Leia at the console and, and the she explosion, gets blown out and she goes wrong. I'm sitting. The whole theater. Remember the size? Yeah. The theater went. <gasps> and I just I, remember like my friend Brian's just sitting next to me. He's looking at me and he just looks over at me because I'm just like, you know, like. Yeah. And then I'm thinking maybe Kylo will save her. You know? You know what my thought was? What? Well, they fixed that. Yeah. That was my thought. I yeah. thought, she's dead. They, yeah. they just killed her. Yeah. She's dead. She's gone. She's done. Right. And and then we see her floating in space, and I'm like, Kyle's going to save his mom with the Force because, yeah. you know, he's conflicted by light. He doesn't want her to die. No! Leia saves herself! Leia wakes up. Now, there's a lot of controversy on this scene. She force pull, pulls herself back in. So mm -hmm. here's the Which thing. I love. A lot of people are like, did she bring herself back to life? No. She didn't bring herself back to life. The science of space is that you don't immediately, like, die. Yeah. You slowly freeze to death. Yeah, and we saw her getting frosty. Yeah. You know? And you don't expand and blow up like a bubble. Like, it doesn't happen immediately. It's not like that, okay? So, and after an explosion, you're disoriented. Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing would obviously, like, you know, knock you unconscious. Yeah. She wakes up. An she, act of self-preservation. Yes, yes. The for, she wakes up, the force, and she pulls herself in using Yes. And, okay. And, and how, can, how can you dismiss that and call it a WTF moment when we have been told repeatedly that the Skywalkers are among the strongest force users of the storyline? And not only that, but it is canon that Yoda... Number one, wanted to train Leia and not Luke. And number two, thinks Leia is stronger than Luke to begin with. What, what part can the death uh, There is a conversation in, um, in Rebels? Or maybe it's in a comic book or something? Or a oh, novel. maybe it's in Rebels. But there's a, there's a canon reference that Yoda, um, Yoda thinks that, that, uh, that Obi-Wan... That, um, um, that Leia is the more the more powerful one. Well, the, anyhow, there are three comics, three graphic novels, each one based on one of the movies, but each of them is an alternate universe tale that connects. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's an alternate universe uh, trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. In the first one, Luke does not succeed in blowing up the Death Star. Ooh. Leia remains captive with Darth Vader. Uh, in the Empire Strikes Back, he is training Leia to be a Jedi. Ooh. You know. Uh, because he wants to use her against Luke. I mean, 
I can't remember what Star Wars called their Elseworlds or their yeah, what ifs, yeah. but this saga was a giant Elseworld what if. Yeah. And it was amazing. And I'm like, I would love to see these movies too. Well, like, and the thing, one of the biggest questions is, will we see Leia use the Force? And we did. And it was it magnificent. Was, and the thing is, we've always seen her use the Force, but only one way. Yeah. In, only one in way. In connecting and... Yes. And, and this time, we got to see, yes, she can. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And it makes sense. And if Rey is a nobody who's extremely connected to the Force, yeah. Leia, who is a somebody, because this is her story. Yeah. Right, as it was pointed out, Ray, it's not your story. You're not even important here. We'll get to that. <laughs> I love that, um, but it is her story. So yes, I was I was accepting of it immediately. My theater broke into applause for that scene. Everyone was like on board with like yes, yes, yeah. like yes. Yeah, and, and I, was I think for me, it just it it initially felt out of place, but just the way it's shot, it's very like you know. Uh, and and I don't know if maybe after Carrie Fisher's passing they sort of bumped up that scene and elongated. I I initially felt like it was too long, mm -hmm. like the 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 initial time frame of seeing her floating in space to her actually pulling herself in. I, I just felt like loved it. It was quicker, just this beautiful, but, gorgeous shot. And maybe yeah. that's and, may, and you know what? Yeah, that's another thing. A lot of people were like flipping out over the two and a half hours. I it flew by for me. No, I was, I, I love that it was shot. Perfect. I love that shot I, because it kept me thinking what is happening, especially yeah. as like you see the frost in her hand and you see the finger and then you see the twitch yeah. in her hand. I was just like that. It just had me because I was like, oh, didn't they just kill her? Well, I mean, like, what's happening? I'm like, Kyla's going to save her. Kyla's going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, she's saving herself. Yeah. She's saving herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then she returns. She's in a coma. Vice Admiral Holdo has to take over. Um, Lord Dern, excellent performance. Lord Dern's amazing. Uh, the the, um, I'll tell you what. My wife, not a big fan of Star Wars at all. Doesn't you know? Doesn't know every. Doesn't know anything. She just knows there are a bunch of whiny people in space. And um, <laughs> I mean, that's literally like how she you know it, it views the whole know, thing. Yeah, you know, The Force Awakens. She's like, yeah, it's about time that a girl kicks ass. Whatever. She loved this movie. She she felt she could relate to it. A lot of strong female characters. In fact, and you know what was almost a matriarchal society. You know what was very interesting? Those roles, those things that happened, it didn't matter if that was a man or a woman. That's true. If General Holdo was still a man, I don't think anything would have changed there, except mm -hmm. maybe, just maybe, how Poe viewed uh, Holdo. That Possibly. might be the only yeah. thing that would have changed. That's true. Um, so... Poe, without Holdo's knowledge, uh, formulates a plan with Finn and Rose, with a little help from Maz Kanata, to get to the Casino in Canto Bight, mm -hmm. to find the slicer, and, to help and, them and, get a, little, in. and a little help from, from Billy Lord's character. Billy Lord, because yeah. she like hides that yep. the, the pod flew off. Yep. Um, and that sets them all on that journey. So let's talk a little bit about that story arc for a minute. Because a lot of people don't like it, think it's out of place, it's a useless storyline, nothing happens at the end. Uh, it ends up being a failed mission, yep. which is which is incredible because that doesn't happen a lot in Star Wars that there's a failed mission. Okay, um, people didn't like the creatures, the casino scene. I don't know why people didn't like the creatures. I thought they were fine, and I thought they were, and I thought there was I kids thought, love that stuff. Exactly. And this stuff and for, stop forgetting that Star, Star Wars, Wars is for twelve year olds. It's for children too. Yeah. You know what? This PG thirteen, right? Yeah. All right, so at least it's for 12-year-olds. And you know there's going to be a couple people who bring their 8-year-old. Yeah, but it's, I mean, fundamentally, Star Wars has always been about a child coming of age, entering puberty, and deciding what kind of a person to be. You know, the, the good side, the bad side, the light, the dark, good decisions, bad decisions, honorable, deceptive. Like, that's, that's what these stories are about. And that's still Ray's mm -hmm. story you know, in this. Yeah. That's still and, her arc. And, 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 and Kylo's to an extent as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, and the other message that George Lucas, you know, wanted to, which this movie touches on, is in the prequels, those movies are about trusting in institutions, trusting in these large organizations that you're told are good for you and are going to help you, and how that's not always true. The Jedi Order. I mean, the, even they are trusting flawed. in the Jedi. They are extremely flawed. And, and even in, in the prequels, 
Like especially it's, the prequels. It, the, the prequels show us, and Luke says it in this movie yes. that they they allowed their hubris to, to overtake their common sense and their yeah. their you know their their no, their, Luke's, their perception. Luke's, Luke's lines like. Added to mm-hmm. the justification of the prequels. Oh, absolutely! Because I've told you, the more we've, ex- the more the, the the Star Wars canon has expanded mm-hmm. for the official canon, the more I'm like less upset with the yeah. sequel uh, with the prequels yeah. because more things fit mm-hmm. and bring things to light. Yep. And uh, um, and the Canto bite, like it's the cantina scene of this mm-hmm. movie. You got to have something with funky aliens. I thought that this was hysterical. I thought it was hysterical. I loved all the funny stuff, BB-8 and the shooting of the coins. BB-8 was them great. Getting in trouble. Like, I really enjoyed all that stuff. I thought it was fun. My kids would love that kind of stuff. Um, by the way, uh, there's a rumor that that little, like, leprechaun alien that's mm-hmm. shoving the coins in BB-8 is voiced by Mark Hamill. Oh, that... So, I, can, I can see that yeah. easily. Um, but they they go to look for this guy. They ultimately find him right before they're taken to jail. Yeah. Where they meet this other spacer. Where we don't where they don't connect with him. That's right. They don't connect with him at all. Yeah. Then they find this other guy who uh, who can do the job, played by Benicio del Toro. He's never given a name. Yep. He's credited as DJ. Yep. Uh, and this 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 escape happens and it, it, a really good escape. You you learn more about Rose and her perception. You you learn that these she are the offers, rich people. She offers up her. She gives him the thing to 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 um to pay him to do the job because yep. she knows it's for the cause. Yep. You know, and Finn is like, no, 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 and he's like, she's like, nope, do it. You know, uh, and then they they head back to the fleet to get uh, Rose and Finn onto. Um, Snoke's ship to disable the, the yeah. hyperspace tracker. And Benicio Del Toro's character is supposed to disable the security yeah. so that she Slip can get to and, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the the hyperspace uh, tracker and yeah. shut it down. Since we're talking about Rose and Finn. Oh my god, are. love them. Um, so Love you, Rose Tico. You're the best. She's a great addition to the Star Wars universe. She is. I don't care what so. anyone says. Everyone's like, oh, the men in this movie look so incompetent, whatever. I was like, yeah, I hate to break it to you guys. You look incompetent in real life, too. I so was thanks. just going to say, isn't <laughs> they like... I mean, in real life, we're pretty incompetent as it is. So. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. We're plenty competent. I'm probably plenty com- competent. But I mean, like, look at the situation. Yeah, it's yeah. like... Come um, on. So, so then... Let's go back to, um, let's go back to, uh, oh, there's, there's, there's Leia, Leia. Um, and there's Luke, and where's, oh, here we go, Kylo and, Kylo and, uh, Kylo and Ray. Um, so, uh, so I just noticed that the, her, I don't know, you can't see it on screen, but you see there her, the cut on her arm from the fight. Yeah. So let's go back to her training on Octu with Luke. Um, she gives those, she gives those fish nuns. On that planet, to run for their money. Oh my god, you call them fish nuns like, too. Yeah, I call them fish nuns. Um, this whole movie's about trolling. She's trolling the fish nuns. Luke and she doesn't even Ray. mean to. Yeah, and like you know, no, I consider Kylo's, trolling like you're poking the bear. Yeah. She didn't mean to. Kylo She's... trolls Snow. Like everybody's trolling everybody in this movie. So yeah. um, Poe Kylo... trolls Hux. So uh, oh my god, everybody's everybody's trolling Hux. somebody. Right? Yeah, everybody's yeah, trolling yeah. Hux, and then Hux um, tries to troll, <laughs> yeah, and he's just uh, no good. <laughs> um... I did feel like they borderline brought Hux to this like buffoonery level, like this line. The competent but, buffoon. <clears throat> the competent buffoon. Is yeah. Where, you know, where so, individually he's a buffoon, but as a leader he's just like... <coughs> well, yeah. Until that got buffoonish at the end. <coughs> so, um, so Ray's training with Luke. She has this vision. She decides to go down into the dark place and try to figure out who her parents are. She touches the thing. The whole, like, multiple, like, copies of her, that whole thing, like, like there, there's, there's, there's a lot of, like, imagery in there, and I'm not sure I entirely, like... For me, this is Luke in the tree. Yeah, in the cave when he sees yeah. himself in Vader. Why do I keep calling that Luke in the tree? But yeah, it's kind of, there's a tree Luke there. Luke in the tree. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, that's definitely what this moment is. Um, and, and there's definitely that symbolism when she asks who her parents are. You see the two figures walking, and then they they meld into one, and then it, it's, it's just it's her. Right. Which, is, which is, that to me was meaningful, because you are 
your parents. You are who you come from. I mean, as a parent now, I find myself doing and saying things that my parents did or said, for better or worse. And, <laughs> and it, you're and like, it, and it completely. <laughs> well, not only that, but it com- it just it just it, you reassess your perception of things as a child, and you realize, wow, maybe my parents reacted this way because things were so rough on them, you know. And it just becomes a it becomes an interesting um, interesting thought. So there's a lot of meaning for me in this moment when she. It, it, the vision she's having shows her when she asks, "Let me see, let me let me see my parents," and then uh, and then that's it. She leaves that, and then um, she's having the four skypes with Kylo, and it's things are progressing. That she's she's feeling alone. He's feeling alone. They they touch. Luke comes in, sees it, tells him to stop. Uh, which, by the way, that whole explosion of the of that the bricks, thing yeah. that was completely practical. That was a one shot, one take. Practical uh, effect. Practical effect. That's impressive. So, yeah. Was it the um, same when they did the bricks falling, blowing apart for the flashbacks um, to Luke and uh, Kylo? I don't know about that, but that's oh again, and then we get this, we get this, these, these two different versions of what happened that night. Yep. And then we discover that in fact Luke is one of the reasons why Kylo Ren exists. Yeah. And why as Kylo he, Ren. Yeah. And. Um, you know whether or not he would have continued to turn to the dark side, we don't know. But he, it's it's Luke's reaction and his his failure as a mentor and a master um, is what is what creates Kylo Ren and and this and this evil you know, entity. So here's one of the arguments of people, you know, who are like, oh no, I can't I can't deal mm-hmm. with Luke in this movie. They're like, oh no, he never gave up on his father. Why would he give up on his apprentice? And I'm like, let me tell you something. There was no, he never gave up on his father. At the end of Empire, he finds out who his daddy is. Yeah. Okay, and then he has one movie, one movie to try he has to make a difference. One conversation with him. Yeah, one conversation with him. You know, and Yoda even tells him Return of the Jedi. He's mm-hmm. like, you faced him too soon. And it was his choice to not strike his father down. That yeah. is what proved to his father that. Maybe he wasn't making the right choice. Yeah. And so Vader, Anakin, chooses the other way, returns to the light side, and and is 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 rescued, so to speak, by his father. And right. But do, do are we really gonna say, oh no, Luke never gave up on his dad? I'm like, how long did he know? <laughs> You know, and, th- and Yoda even told him, "It's like, look, it's probably not gonna go." Yoda's the one saying, "It's probably not gonna go the way you think." Yeah, and you already faced him too soon. Yeah, you. Know, I mean, like, I, I mean, yeah. did, I, I guess, like, maybe you need to rewatch the original trilogy and watch this again, and yeah. you know, take some notes. I just and, and Luke, Luke even says that he just says that, like, I, and when he's saying the hubris of the Jedi, I think he's referring to himself in a little bit too, and that course. he thinks he because thinks he thought they were the greatest thing ever. Yeah, and he he's like, oh, I'm. Luke Luke Skywalker, I you can do this, and then when he when he realizes that he's failed his his student, he's like, oh well, I'll just have to kill him and start over, you know, for that brief moment. Then he decides, no, that's the wrong thing to do. But it's, but too, it's late. too late. Kylo sees him with the with the saber and thinks he's about to attack him, and then they and then they they clash, and then that's the creation of Kylo Ren, and, and it, it takes him and away. it creates this very interesting dynamic of. Neither one of you was right, and neither one of you was That's wrong. That's right. You both made mistakes, and yeah. you both had the right idea. You know, it's yeah. like it's 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 crazy. And then and 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 then um, you know when um, when you know Ray 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 and Luke have a confrontation, and she's like, "You you need to come back. There's still hope. You need to come help me. Kylo Ren will turn. I've I've foreseen it." And Luke knows that. Oh, and that whole thing where they're fight. Oh, by the way. Let's just back up a little bit. His his daily routine, uh, too. <laughs> hysterical, going Great. and milking that thing, and yep. the, he's clearly trying to get her to leave. Yes. He's cl- trying to get her to get out of there. You know, uh, the uh, he's like, "Yep, this is pretty much what I do." You know, and yep. he just drinks it, and just like, just like it, it was amazing. And then, and then the joke where she's like, "I've seen your I've seen your daily routine. You've got time. Yeah. Train me." Um, <laughs> you know, this whole thing. The um um you see you see the X wing in the in the water, in the water um the, just everything and then um and then they have this confrontation where she's she finally says look you need to come and and they they're fighting they fight she grabs a lightsaber she turns it on she pushes him back she and uses her staff him, and she catches it, Luke yeah. catches himself yeah. before he falls and then lets it, he's like that is I mean like as much as people don't see the loop they want to see, he is still Luke Skywalker and he is a badass. And yeah. he proves it at every moment. 
in this movie. And, and you know, he, he's like, this isn't going to go the way that you think it is because he knows that visions are based also on perception. Yep. And, 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 and by the end of it, Kylo and Rey both saw the same vision and interpreted it the complete opposite of each other. Yeah. Not to mention, we also find out that Snoke was the one providing the Skype. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that he's the one connecting them. And so Ray is, Ray, Ray even says, she, she says, look, you need to come with me. And he refuses. So she's like, I'm going to go do it myself. And she leaves. Very much like, you know, Luke and Empire, where he's just like, I got to go save my friends. And, and Yoda's like, Yoda's like, you know, uh, Your friends you, will be you, fine. You Don't do you it. Can't go. He's like. He's like. It will be what it is. You can't go and. And not him. to mention, if he were not there, it wouldn't have changed anything. Leia still would have gotten away, and Han would yeah. still be frozen in the carbonites. Yeah. You know, and Luke would have just completed his training sooner. But yeah. no face. Talk about a failed mission. Exactly. Yeah. That's very much a failed. The mission. only thing that comes out of that is that Luke discovers that Vader is his father. You have a twin sister. Yeah. There is another hope. Vader is his father. L Leia. Here's Luke through the Force, yep. and they go yep. and save him in Cloud yep. City. Yep. That I remember the first time I watched it as a kid, and I thought it was so cool. And I convinced myself that it was Luke sent a message yep. to Leia. Yep. Right? I was like, "Oh wow! Like this is like a new power he has." And then you know, once I watched Return of the Jedi as a kid and everything, I was like, oh, "She's his sister. She could hear the Force." Oh, like it was so great. Yep. And that was um, the first time I fell in love with, with Princess Leia, was yeah. realizing she was his sister, yeah. and putting together that scene was about her hearing the Force. And that's the thing, is you start to wonder, are Kylo Ren and Rey brother and sister? God, because there's so many, there's there's so the many half connected? jokes. There's, there's, there's so many half jokes about it, especially when he's shirtless and oily, yeah. and she's just like, could you just could, could you put a shirt? Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. I did again that weird humor, but that yeah. worked really yeah. well. I by the way, I didn't expect I didn't expect these jokes coming from her, but they were yeah. great. Oh, yeah. And Mark Hamill's jokes with her, which you pointed out. Oh, awesome. when he's like, "Where are you from, Ray?" and he's like, and she's like, "I'm from nowhere," and he's like, "Nobody's from nowhere. Where are you from?" And he goes, "To good." He goes, "Well, it's pretty much nowhere." <laughs> so Ray, you're right. Nowhere. That pretty is nowhere. So Ray from. Uh, so uh, just it was it was just uh, it was so great. Like um, the uh, uh, so she decides to leave, and she goes, and Luke stays there. Um, so she goes. Turn, you know, she, she, her, Chewie drops her off at the ship, goes in, Kylo Ren's waiting for her, and then we have the Return of the Jedi, Vader Luke scene, they're riding up the elevator, they go to the th throne room of the Supreme Leader, just like in Return of the Jedi, and then nothing is the same <laughs> after that, because, um, you, Snoke, amazing in this movie. Yeah. Force powers just like off the chart. He's just like I mean when he hits when he hits uh Kylo Ren earlier, he like shocks him. Is it Kylo Ren or Hux? I forget. He hits one of them and he 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 ricochets the the force lightning off the floor and hits him like just just absolutely incredible. And he's so powerful. Such a gr such great dialogue and character. Ray reaches out for the lightsaber. He swings, he it, swings around it around and, and hits her in the head. And he's like, oh, so full of spunk. I love you, kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, just like. Just to come to the dark side. It's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. Just, he's like, he's like, ah, we've got cookies. Come on. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so it just. Dark and, chocolate cookies. <laughs> and, and, and Kylo's like, look, I know, I know you'll, you'll join me when the time is right. And, uh, and so, you know, that she. He he takes he takes the information from her, uh, and laughs because he's like, you know what, Skywalker's wiser than we thought. He knows the Jedi should end, so let's give him the ending and the death he deserves. Um, Boy, is it about perception too? Because yeah. that's what he sees in Ray's mind. He wants to yeah. he wants to run with that. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and so then we have um, Snoke presents Ray to Kylo Ren for him to strike down. He, and Kylo does this amazing thing where he turns his lightsaber as he turns the one on Snow, uh, Ray's lightsaber. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, they're going to force pull it to Ray and then they're going to fight. And then he ignites it. No, see, I'll tell you why I didn't believe it. 
I believed that he was going to take down Snoke because Snoke is like, I see in your mind, you're preparing to strike down your foe. And I'm watching that lightsaber yeah. turn right to Snoke. And I'm like, oh, hey. Well, as soon as it started moving, I was like, oh, they're going to force pull it to Ray. And then it kept turning. And yeah. I was like, he's not going to stab him in the side, is yeah, he? he just I'm like, they're not going to kill Snoke right now. I'm yeah, like, they're they not going to do that. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, Snow will stop. Snoke will stop it. And no, he's too caught up with what he sees. I know, and like, and Kylo's doing a m masterful job of like, of of having the dual, the 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 uh, the dual thought of like, I'm turning my lightsaber to strike down, and he's in his mind, I'm going to strike down my greatest enemy, and that's because Snoke says that. Yeah, he says, and Kylo Ren's going to strike down his greatest enemy, and in in and the reality is that Snoke is Kylo's greatest enemy, not Rey, and and when he kills him and cuts him in half, I was like. I was like, what just happened? This is, and then they, she grabs the lightsaber and then one of the best fights, choreographed fights ever. And they're fighting the Praetorian guards. There's so many Jedi fights. This is among my favorites. I haven't decided if it's my, my new favorite, but it's among my favorites. The only thing that this one is missing is lightsaber on lightsaber action. Because this is the only movie, save for the moment that Kylo and Luke are, like that Kylo thinks, Luke is is gonna kill him. Aside from their lightsabers coming together, there are no lightsaber on lightsaber fights in this movie. Yeah, and um, and it's pretty amazing. And the Praetorian Guard fight happens. They team up, work so well together. Yep. And now we're thinking, oh my god! At this point, I really don't know. Is Rey gonna go to the dark side with Kylo? Is Kylo gonna go to the light side with Rey? Then who's the bad? Like in the meantime. The ships are trying to escape on the other side. Oh yeah, the ships yeah. are trying to escape. Like Leia's already awake again. They're, they've all, they've all. Oh, that's right. And yeah. the, her, her, her reaction with Poe, with, uh, with, with him trying to take over the ship. She with shoots. Haldo. She, Leia shoots Poe during the mutiny. Yep. Yep. I love that. And by the way, what was it? It's R two and uh, not R two. Uh, C three PO is there. Not knowing uh, what's yep, going on. Yep, yep. And again, uh, Billy Lord's character. Yep. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> like meanwhile. <laughs> Uh, Rose and Finn yep. uh, and DJ are on the ship. They've done everything they can. They get caught at the end, and now they're about to be executed. Yeah, on, on, on Snoke's ship. Yep, on Snoke's ship. You know, all while everyone's completely unaware of yep. where everyone is. And then, and then, um, all of the so all of the resistance people are into their transports. They're heading down to the planet of Kray. They're cloaked. Hall, they're cloaked. But now Hall Hux has stays. figured it out and yep. started firing on them. Thanks to the guy that Rose and Finn brought. Yes, who, who betrayed them, them immediately. Who betrayed them immediately and. Seemingly no redemption whatsoever. Yeah, see, kids, don't trust strangers. Well, the only redemption he gave, he gave Rose he her, gave her, her thing well, back. And that's, again, Ryan Johnson is amazing because then you think, oh, this guy's actually a good guy. Yeah. And then in the end, he turns out he's No, but he's like, uh, I'm only in it for me. Yeah. You know? Like, I can be a good guy as long yeah. as it's not costing me nothing. Com <laughs> complete failure on the missions part. And so yeah. a lot of people are like, well, what's the point of that? And the point is... We have is, to see failure, too. Well, it's not... And that's... And, oh, we, and, and that hope shouldn't die. Not only that, but specifically, this is the journey that Finn needs to take because he, up until this point, up until that point, he had not chosen the resistance. Yeah. He had chosen to keep Ray safe. Yeah. Because Ray is his friend and he cares about her. This is him choosing to fight yeah. for the resistance and to, and to resist the First Order. And up until this moment, he really did not make that decision yeah. until he's there on his knees and he realizes that 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 guy didn't choose a side. I need to choose a side. And um, and meanwhile, uh, uh, you know, Luke goes to burn down the temple, the the tree temple with the books inside, and says and is and and hesitates. Yoda's there, and then Yoda does it. Yeah. And he says to him, he says, he says, those books uh, do not contain that which Ray does not already possess. Yeah. Page turners, they are not. Page turners, they are not. And here's the great part, is I didn't even realize... That they're, they're on the ship. That Ray had already taken them. Yeah. And they're on the Millennium Falcon. I, did, I saw the movie twice, and somebody had to point it out to me after I had seen I it. I saw it the first time, and I'm like, yeah! Yeah, I didn't even realize it, so... So it just the the last word of the movie just yeah. oh and again Yoda says to Luke you know you're never here 
You're always somewhere else. You're not here in the moment. And, and then he says, you know... That's a personal problem for me. And yeah. that, that line hit me hard. And, My thought uh, was there in that moment. <laughs> um, and he says to Luke that our best... Th the thing we can teach our students the most is to fail. Because you learn more from failing. Failure is the greatest teacher, I think, is what he says. Mm -hmm. And and such a strong message in this movie because... And the movie's got a lot of failure. A lot of things fail. And it's like... And, 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 and it's, not, it's not to let hope die. Mm -hmm. It's to learn and to grow and to have hope for the next achievement. And, and, and hope is so important. And uh, which brings us back to the whole ship thing. Now the, the pods are escaping. Mm -hmm. Leia's awake. They're escaping on the pods. Um... Poe Dameron now knows the whole plan and what was supposed to go down, but his, his, what, a his is. what a buffoon is, his own hubris now yeah. put everyone in danger, yeah. and now that the cloak ships are in danger because they're being fired upon, and we are losing, we are losing We're rebellion losing left rebellion and right, all, all over the place. General Holdo turns the main transfer ship around to light speed right through. <sighs> At first I thought, oh, she's going to jump away so that it's, they think that they've gone that way. And then she keeps turning it, and I was like, she's "Oh no, she's gonna ram! She's gonna like attack them." That and scene then is gorgeous. She hyperspaces and and just like that's this and dead, dead silence, silence and just dead silence in the theater. Yeah. Just to, I want you to know, as soon as soon as that moment of silence in the movie ended, right? As soon as that moment of silence, and you could like hear again, and like you could, it cuts back to uh, it cuts back to the to the ship, yeah. right? That moment, everyone's like, ah! in my theater, I was like, okay. <laughs> It was incredible. It was a wonderful moment. Beautifully done. And uh, um, so now everything's crumbling apart. The resistance is going down to the to crate. Ray, uh, um, Ray and Kylo have their final moment. She chooses not to join him. And he oh, and we the discovery of Ray's parents. Yeah, they're nobody. And Ray and Kylo says maybe maybe not. Kylo says well, right. That's that, that, that he says you know it. Say it. And she goes they're nobody. Yeah. And he, Kylo even says, this, this isn't your story. Yeah. You don't belong in this story. I, I, by the way, I'm okay either way. I'm okay if that's just it. I'm okay if we find well, out I, in she's my mind, Palpatine's granddaughter. It's, it's, I don't care. I, you know, here's <laughs> the thing, though, is like, again, I think that's a conversation with the fans. Is they're saying, is they're saying it doesn't matter who Ray's parents mm -hmm. are. You know, and Kylo, Kylo saying to her that she doesn't belong in this story is bull. She does belong in this story because she is... The, the yin to his yang. I mean, Snoke even says that. And I love their explanation of the Force and why Rey is so powerful and that as Kylo Ren's dark power rose, there needed to be an equal in the light right, to because, balance it out. Because the, because force, the force is not good or bad. Right. It, the and force is just Bendu, If you watch Rebels, Bendu, which is a creature that Kanan meets, explains this to Kanan. He goes, there is no good or bad of the force. There is only light and dark. Yeah. And those and are good or bad. Yeah. And, and, and he says the force is always trying to be in balance. Yeah. So this theory that, you know, that uh, that that any one Jedi can bring balance to the Force is a lot of huckabaloo. Mm -hmm. Like it's the the Force is always trying to be in balance, and hence why Rey is so powerful because she is the light side mirror image of um, of Kylo, and 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 they need to balance each other out. And um, and it's like and when Yoda in the last five episodes of the Clone Wars, Yoda's in that. That that force planet, and there's there's the old guy and the two kids, and one is dark and one is light, and like that's the whole thing. That's the balance of of everything, and um, and for them to to really go in that direction is incredible because now it it's it's it 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 still has this mystery. Now we have these these powerful you know sides of the force that can clash, and and uh, and in nine. I'm excited because now we're so invested in Kylo and Rey's relationship. This is the second time that they've... They, the first time they met, they were against each other. Now they were with each other. And now they're gone apart again. And now we're going to see them finally clash again in the end. And it's going to be that much more satisfying. Way more satisfying than Vader and Luke. Because we were never even invested in that as much. You know? Right. We, wa we watched this relationship grow to these... To, to this places. pinnacle, yeah. And yeah. Then, I mean, this is like, this is interweaving together. Um, so everybody gets down to the planet crate. The resistance sends down, um, sends down. Oh, what did you think of Phasma in this? Well, I was happy to see more of her. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see her fight. 
But damn, the day we're like, by the way, oh, you want more pheasant? She's not important either. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, wow. We don't oh. know that she's not coming back. We don't, I know, but you know, that looked pretty. That look, 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 in canon, Boba Fett man should survive being inside that worm. Why not? Why, you know, why shouldn't Phasma come rising out of the flames? Of I don't the know Phoenix? if in canon he survived. I know his armor survived. I don't know. I'm pretty um, sure, it, I'm pretty sure him survival got to stay in canon, I we'll think. We'll see. Um, so then we have that, and that would have been a great ending to the movie. You know, Holdo saves the fleet, the fleet escapes to Crate. Yeah, but they no. send their signal and that's it. But no. No, we got half hour left. We got more. <laughs> so they 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 bunker themselves up in an old uh, uh, rebel base on Crate. The resistance sends down, you know, walkers to come at them with this with this giant, you know, battering ram. And they got to figure out Death Star do. technology. Mini, mini, miniaturized Death Star they technology. They need to just... We don't need a Death Star in every single movie. Yes. Empire was fine without a Death Star. The original trilogy yeah. is flawed, but there was no Death Star. We don't need a Death Star every movie. Um, so, all right. So we got to go. We got to deal with this thing. So what do we do? All right, we get these little ships. We go through. Okay, cool. Old ships. Old ships. That, the the can't even ships. fly. They have like a little peg that sticks in the ground. So meanwhile, they're losing this fight. Ray and Chewie show up in the Falcon, and Ky Kylo Ren goes ballistic. It's like, destroy that ship! Pulls all the TIE fighters away, which is brilliant. And exactly what Ray wanted. It exactly was so what great. Ray wanted. And, uh, Porg's um, going crazy in the Porg's ship. going crazy. Oh my god, the Porg's. I, don't I thought it was like one pet place. Porg. That mofo had Porg's all over the yeah, damn all, ship. All the place. Um, was well, the scene earlier when when Luke is in when Luke is in the the Falcon? Yes, and there's, um, much and there's a bunch of there's like porgs nesting and yeah. stuff. So, um, uh, so they get so they pull them off. They're still getting they're still getting attacked, and then Poe is like, "Look, we got to pull off. We got to break off the attack." Um, and Finn's like, "No, we got to finish this." And everybody yeah. pulls because now Finn is, Finn, Finn is super. Finn is committed. Finn is like, Finn is like, I'm I'm gonna follow in Paige's footsteps. We need to save. We need to save everybody. Yeah. And in then, the meantime, Kyle's like, "This is an order." No, I mean, um, Poe's like, "This is an order." Back down. He's like, "Nope." Click. Yeah. Doing everything yeah. that Poe had done in the beginning. Yeah. Now he's yeah. disobeying Poe. Uh, uh, and you really see Poe's character grow in this yes, moment absolutely. too, where he he learn he realizes like you know. Uh, he learned some good leadership. Yeah, he's a good teacher. Yeah, uh, he, he rolled. He rolled an eighteen on leadership this Rose time. Rose decides. Rose decides she's gonna save Finn or attempt to save Finn by crashing into him and getting him to stop. Love it. Okay, uh, so they do that, and then you know this this beautiful moment of we're not gonna we're not gonna win we're not gonna win this by destroying what we hate. We're gonna win it by saving what we love. Such a topical message, too. I loved it so much. Such a, such a present day message. Yeah. Something we can all take in our daily lives. I just, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, and then they retreat into the base. So now it's, it's, they're about to break down the door. And, you know, the, the, the resistance defeat is inevitable. And then this shadowy figure comes in from the back. And it's Luke Skywalker. Looking trim and clean and ready to rock and roll. Has a beautiful moment with Full Leia. He's, Jedi he's, garb. He's got his Jedi. He's got his finest Jedi garb on. <laughs> he and what does he do? Steps out with his laser sword and takes on the whole First Order. Yeah. Just like by the way, said he, he had this extremely pressing scene with R two D two. Oh, R two D two is lecturing him and oh, then that's plays right. yep. plays Leia's plays recording, the recording from A New Hope. And yep. he's like, "That's a, there are that's a there are wonderful blow. moments. There are moments with Yoda and moments with R two where the old Luke yes is showing. In the meantime, he sees three PO and it's like, "Yo, what's up?" He's, he, and wings, even, he, he just wings. wings. He just he wings. wings. And I'm like, him. he's like, Master Luke. And I'm just like, I was like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, y'all spent a lot of time together, just for the record, but okay. So, um, of course, I mean, 3PO already had to let go of the past because he used to be Anakin's and then he got mind wiped. Yeah. By the way, but R2 still remembers all of that. And, it, you know, don't ever want anyone to forget. R2 knows it all. R2 knows everything. Yeah. So, he was never um, mind wiped. I don't think he was. So, uh, so Luke steps out onto the battlefield, takes off his robe, and he's like, "Come and at me, bro!" Single-handedly goes up. Come to at me, bro! Order. And and Kylo Ren's like, "Fire everything at that guy!" And meanwhile, I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking, what is going on? Like, it's, hopefully Luke can, like, force shield himself of or whatever. Of course, he's just like, like the lightsaber's just like, gonna, boom, 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 like, boom. Like, 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 something, and then, and then it, 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 and, you know, Hux is like, I think we got him. <laughs> and, like, yeah, it's like, it clears, and then he just... Love it. Uh, just, and not a scratch on him, and I'm like, man. And then he pulls out the lightsaber and ignites it, and I said to myself, wait a minute. His hair's darker. He got a haircut. And now he's got... He's got raised lightsaber that was broken in the previous scene. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is going on here? Did he make a new lightsaber? Like, I start questioning what's going on. But it's Luke. He totally could have made a new lightsaber. Well, yeah, but it looks exactly like that one. And I'm just yeah. like... And then I slowly start to realize, and probably about... Probably about 30 seconds before Kylo Ren realizes it. Mm-hmm. Before he goes and he swipes him down. Yeah. Uh, right before then, I was like, oh, he's not really... And then he swipes him, and he goes through him, and whatever, and then he does it, and he's, and everything he says, oh, and Kylo Ren says something to him, and he goes, every word in that sentence was wrong. Yeah, great callback. <laughs> and he's like, call and he's back. like, he, he's like, he's like, the war starts, the war is just beginning. Like, just, just everything, just like, it's just amazing, and he says, if you strike me down, I'll be with you always, just like your father. And then he goes, you know, he, he goes to strike him down, and then he finds out he's not really there, and he's like, see you around, kid. <sighs> And it, you know, and then it gives them enough time to get out. Plan the and escape. then another callback is when Ray Ray is like, "Oh, I gotta lift rocks." You know, yeah, because to Cause, break, because she's like, them you know, it's about path. controlling the force and lifting rocks. And he's like, "It's about none." And he's like, "That's when he's like, everything in that sentence was wrong." And then she's like, "Okay, I gotta lift some rocks." You know, and she moves. It's just God that whole that moment where she pulls the rocks yeah, apart and yeah. they see her and They're Finn her. sees yeah. her and everyone's watching her and I was just like, "Oh my." God. God, yes, and and you know when they're escaping, Leia's got a freaking blaster in her hand oh, on the way when, out. When Finn and Rose come crashing in through the door, everybody's yeah. shooting at them, including Leia. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was so, so great. And then they get Finn fantastic. and Rose, and yep. they plan their escape, and they follow. They get on the just Falcon. like just like every other movie you've seen, follow the freaking animals to safety, yeah. and yeah. then that's when they discover the rocks. And Leia, I mean, Ray is on the other side. And she's like, "Gotta lift rocks." Yeah, <laughs> but it was just so beautiful. Yeah. And the moment we see Ray rescuing. The, rebe- the Rebels yeah. is the moment that Luke is telling Kylo, everything you said is wrong, and I am not the last Jedi. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, oh my yeah. God, even just talk about it, I just yeah. get the chills. Yeah. It was wonderful. You just see Rey there like this, yeah. and just the rocks, and I'm just like, oh my God. Like, you know, I was one of those people who who just was all over the place on her being a Mary Sue and... In Force Awakens, but like like you said, this movie did such a masterful job of explaining, like, no, the Force was like growing yeah. inside her to counter his darkness, yeah. and I'm like, oh. yeah. Well, she it's it's as though if Kylo had never have, had never risen in the dark side, she would have been Force sensitive and could have been a very competent and and powerful Jedi. Yeah. But it was it was the fact that they needed a counter. So, um, just incredible, and the, the ending. The um, and then the very end, we cut back to Canto Bite. Mm-hmm. And well, before that, while they're still on the planet together and they're lo- searching for whatever they can, mm-hmm. Kylo reaches out through the force to talk to Ray again, right? And they have that now, oh, they now this, they yes, now so they she's Skype, on the Falcon now they then, Skype together yeah, and yeah. she's on the Falcon and he's looking at her, he's like, Ray, and she closes the Falcon door and shuts door. him out. And yeah. I'm like, Yes. Yeah. And, and that's um, the last of her Skype calls. <laughs> yeah. For Skype over. Um, and then we go back to Canto Bite, and one of the kids that we meet on Canto Bite, he's they're 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 talking about the what what Skywalker had done, the story. And again, they the kid says, you know, in his own language, blah 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 blah. Legend Jedi Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And you know, I'm like oh, with their little off market yeah. handmade toys. Yeah. And uh, and then they they get yelled at, so the kid goes to sweep up outside. Force pulls the broom over, and then he's standing there holding the broom, looking up at the stars, and just... Uh, and then we find out that, that Rose Tico gave him her rebellion ring. Yeah, he's got his... He's, he's got her uh, her rebel ring, and so... And the movie repeatedly says the rebellion is the spark that lights the flame, yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and this movie, like, that was, that was our moment. Um, and then the, our last moment with the rebellion is on the Millennium Falcon, yep. and, and, and Ray is like, what are we gonna do? Like, this is all that's left of yeah. us. And she's and like, and, and Leia's, Leia's like, we have like, everything we, we have need. everything we need. I would, I mean, those two, 
Those, dude, I don't it's, care what anyone says. Yeah. Like, I just, like, just talking about it, look how excited yeah. the movie made me. It, it just, it just, I, I mean, obviously we all have our own thoughts and our own perceptions and our own expectations and all of that, but I'm just, and I just, I just, I just, like, <laughs> I'm like, it's still a good movie. You know, great, and if it's not it's the Star movie. Wars you wanted, and I'm never going to be able to change your mind that it's not the Star Wars you wanted, I, I, I'm sorry that we can't say, I, I'm sorry you can't say I, it's a good film on its own. I'd like to hope that these people who have, like, hate for it, and they, they, they come to appreciate it like we appreciate the prequels now. And, yeah. Because it's far better than the prequels. Um, so, uh, predictions for episode nine. You know what? It's all over the place now. I do think my one prediction, my one prediction, I think without Carrie Fisher, I feel we must do some sort of time jump. Oh, I think there'll be a more traditional time jump like there was between um, A New Hope and Empire yeah. and Empire and Jedi. Like there, was like there was like five, ten years in between some of those movies. So um, my prediction is that um, Rey will be training a new generation of Jedi and that they will clash with... Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. If there are any Knights of Ren left. Why wouldn't there be? Okay, so there's a scene, very briefly, mm -hmm. when we're going through Kylo's memories, where it looks like he's killing one of his knights. It's super fast. Super fast, where it looks like he's killing one of his own guys. So I wonder, we're always hung up on what are the Knights of Ren, right? This movie didn't cover it. And what if once he united them to blow everything up, Snope is like, that's wonderful, but there can only be one of Prince and it's finished them. Maybe, but there but if anything, Canon has been has been building us up that there are, that there can be multiple force users with lightsaber trained, like in the comic books right now, well, Darth Rebels Vader, did that, right? Well, Rebels did it, and in the comic books, Vader is training those Inquisitors. Yeah. So it's very clear that there can be that there can be uh, multiple levels of <laughs> of. No, 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 they're not Jedi. They're minions who are force sensitive. And, and yeah. Over there. <laughs> so I, I think that there'll be a clash of, of teams, and I think that you know Broom Kid, you know, will be one of them, and like and and things. And of so. course, there is my theory that. Broom Kid will will be the star of his own trilogy. Possibly. There is a part of me that really wants to see that. But then again, Ryan Johnson just seems to be like all over the place. So I'm like, just do what you I'll do just best. Just do what he does and just yeah. let it happen. Um so I'm I'm very excited for episode nine, but I'm not I don't need to have it right away. Well it's in two years anyway. I, I'm very ex uh, but it, but when Force Awakens ended, I was like, I need I need the next one now. Well, you know it's funny because it set us up for all these questions, yeah. and then this movie was like, <laughs> you don't know what you, you don't know what you need. You don't know what you need. Shoom! Yeah. Oh, yeah. he just um, cut off a limb like it was yeah. Luke's arm. And like, yeah. Um. So yeah. So there's Luke Skywalker. All some incredible, incredible, I incredible performance. Incredible performance. I, I can't believe all these pieced together trailers that people have made of of some with somber music. You know, of, of, of Mark Hamill being like, I fundamentally disagree with this whole script. If you're going to this movie with childhood expectations, throw them out the window. And yeah. I'm like, he still took the check, didn't he? Yeah. He still performed. He gave one of the best performances he of his entire career. Yeah. Uh, for someone who was in such disagreement, he delivered hardcore. Well, and the great thing is, is that you got to see that Luke at the end of the movie. Yeah. Like, you got to see that Luke you wanted to see, even though it was the force projection of... Of, of it, but it, it was what'd it was exactly him, what it needed. What did you think of him, you know, actually dying after performing that? I love that feet. shot with the twin sons. Exactly. I thought it was. I thought it, it was mirrors. It, it mirrors the the image of when we first meet him, yes. and just um, I. It was very satisfying and very uh, very fulfilling, and and. I would not be upset if he comes back as a Force ghost in Episode Nine. No, and I think a lot of people because, are expecting yeah, that, and because I feel like. His journey as um, as the character and as Luke Skywalker is complete. Even if we never see him again, whatever. But I, th I have a feeling we'll see him. Um, I think he'll, you know, he'll probably do like you know the the correspondence training with Ray, like like he got with Obi Wan and Yoda. And um, so yeah, I'm excited to see it. I well, the the great thing is is I have I really have no idea what's going to happen next and. The other thing is, now that I've seen this, 
I don't want to know. I don't want to speculate. I don't want to well, like. I, I, I don't want to get into intense conversations I don't, about I don't, who any of your thing is or whatever. I don't know if, anything if, means. So thanks to Facebook memories, I, I, I was able to reflect back on The Force Awakens was ruined for me. Uh, spoiled for me before I finally got to see it. Oh, really? Yes. So, uh, but I was so about going to see this movie, okay, with my special friend, so about seeing it, right, and um, I really, I like cut myself off, I, I just didn't mm -hmm. look at stuff, and a lot of my other friends, I mean, there's stuff on Facebook, like, like the feed, I never look at the feed, and I kind of hate that people see jump on my feed a little bit sometimes and then they complain to me about the things I commented on. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, did you not look to make sure that that link was or was not suitable for work on your own? I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I'm, I, and I, it, I it's a hard time. It actually caused a, a lot of, 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 of painful arguments with, with friends about, well, you commented, it appeared in the feed and then the ruined movie got ruined for me and, you know, <laughs> Um, yeah, well, it happened, you know, and um, I stayed away from all of that. Yeah. You know, on Twitter, on Facebook, I just kept tweeting about comic books and, yeah. and other stuff, and uh, I kept myself shielded to the best of my ability. I tried also to keep, I did not read anything, I did not watch anything, I did not actively go and see anything, and then somebody actually spoiled that Ray picks up the cross guard lightsaber in one of the TV spots. Yeah. Somebody said that to me before I saw the movie and I was like, are you serious, man? So then I had to go and see it because I wanted to see exactly how it was and what was happening. And so, um, especially before anything else was ruined. Yeah. And, but the thing was, is like, even knowing some of that stuff, like it still, it still surprised me. Like everything still like nothing went the way that I thought it was going to go. So this isn't going to end how you expect but this is going to end how you expected it to. So thank you very much for watching. Um, uh, we had a great time. Again, if you haven't seen the movie already, go see it. You, if you haven't seen the movie, you probably won't be watching this long, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, if you saw it once, didn't like it, I highly recommend you go back and see it again. Give it another chance. Uh, it really is a wonderful film, uh, no matter what anybody says. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Tony Cox. And I'm your co-host, Cliff Parmenter. Have a wonderful, again, have a wonderful holiday vacation because we did yeah. not expect. That's true. This is a little, bo this. little bonus one shot for all you uh, Read, Watch, Play fans. So again, we'll see you in 2018. That's right, in and, the new year. Yeah. And, right uh, after my birthday. <laughs> happy, yes, happy birthday. That's right. New Year's Day. New Year's baby. It is. It's it's too bad that like I can't like collect fresh stuff every year. Yeah. Like just the year you're born, your parents get a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah. You don't live you live to see none of it. Yeah. Um. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well on that note. Ugh. Woo! We'll see you next time.